Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about advice and my advice. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what advice could you give to a new programmer? And the short answer is listen, observe, and internalize what you are learning. Let me explain. So one of the biggest mistakes that you can make as a new programmer is to progress from the beginner stage to the philosopher stage too quickly. And what's the, what's, the only thing that's worse than that is to stay in the philosopher stage for too long and be a very, be a very, let's call it pushy. Let's call it pushy. Pushy philosopher. Let me explain. So when you start out as a programmer, you may not believe it, but you're going to progress from the beginner level, which is the first level we usually say, where you're just trying to figure out what you're doing. And you're going to stay in that stage for most likely a few years. Once you progress from that stage and you start realizing that you're repeating work more than you are looking things up, you will at some point get to, to the philosopher stage, as I like to call it, or as some people like to call it. And in the philosopher stage, you will start questioning everything. Well, a lot of stuff anyway, you, you will start questioning, can we do this better? Can it be done in a better way? Can, oh, this is bullshit. I mean, I know that this process that the company is using, it's really ineffective. We should do this way. We do things this way or that way and so forth and so forth. And you're going to very quickly find yourself being more opinionated about things and judging other people's code and trying to improve upon it. Now I will spoil the game for you because this is what's going to happen afterwards and the game will end and you will progress from the philosopher stage to the pragmatic master stage or the master coder level stage when you have realized how dumb you are. When you have realized that all your genius ideas and all the things that you have seen on tech talks and so forth a few of these things are applicable to everyday life and the vast majority of things will not be. Most of it will be absolutely crap to you, but you will think that these are genius ideas and you will apply them because you don't know any better. And when you have burnt your fingers enough, as I said, you will realize that you've been dumb. You will understand what really good software looks like. And that's usually, unfortunately, very uns an un very unsatisfying experience because really good software for most cases is going to be somewhere in the middle. It's going to be a a code base which is a hybrid between modern good practices and a lot of legacy code. That's where it's going to leave you. And that's where you realize what I will argue at the very least, what the life, where the programmer's life is all about. And your life as a senior developer basically comes down to a constant state of taking new requirements, trying to fit them into old code or code that has um, has been created a while ago and then manage risk and legacy. That's what it comes down to. It's sort of uh, the same sort of awakening you might make as a doctor when you go from I'm going to heal everybody to realize that shit, I can only ha really help a few people and most people I just have to make really comfortable before I can't really do all that much to them. It's when reality hits you, you realize that you, you are not as empowered to do as drastic things as you would, would like to be. And if you get comfortable with understand, with that, that's when you, then you become a true senior and you can make the best decisions for any given circumstance. But as a beginner, you will, you, you don't worry about it. This go, everybody goes through this. You will go through this process just as everybody else. And all I can tell you is that Try your best to understand that there are so many complexities to writing good software and the answer is never, 
ever microservices. Oh, I'm being a little bit dramatic here, but I hope I can get my point across. The answer is never found with people who stand and tell you that, you know what, I work for Google and we use microservices and we have all of these fancy tools that we have created. It's the perfect thing. It's the best thing ever. You will get inspired by these people. But the people who you should be really listening to, they're not found on the stage usually. They're found in two places at once. And this is the trick that you need to learn to become a really good software engineer and become a, a senior developer at some point. You need to understand that there's no, there is no such thing as a whole truth coming from one person. Just as you can't trust everything that your coworkers are saying because every person has a different opinion on what good software means. And you might be working in a company with people who are outdated. You might be working with people who are just as you, they're really inspired and they just want to rewrite everything in this awesome new way. And then you might be listening for people to have, who have blogs or a weird YouTube channel and stuff like that. And, and all these people, all these voices, they represent that if you think about them as just that suggestions on things and experiences from different people and not as some rule for how you have to do everything, you will be a further ahead than many, many people who start out as programmers. You have to learn how to look at the problem that you are solving, look at your situation and figure out. I have these problems here and all these different people, they have different suggestions on how I could solve this problem. And it's really rare, guys. It's really rare that someone on a stage or someone on a, as I said, YouTube channel or something like that has a suggestion that perfectly fits your situation. You need to be able to figure out, okay, if I take this suggestion from this person who works at Google, well, I don't really have millions of different services that needs to be orchestrated through Kubernetes. But I do have these two different services and it's kind of a hassle to spin them up by myself. Maybe I could just use Docker and start there and see where that leads me and then maybe I can upgrade to Kubernetes if I need to. If you understand that the problem that you are solving might and the solution to that problem might be found in many places at the same time. You might find that, oh, well, if I just listen to a, a few things that say Google is suggesting, and maybe I take some advice from one of my coworkers who knows the system really intimately and knows kind of how we do our work process, maybe then I can create a solution that is, well, not something that might be right for Google, but it's right for my company and it actually fits this problem really well. It's not as amazing as what they're doing maybe or someone else, it's not perfect, but it's perfect for my situation. That is the most valuable thing that you can learn. You're, it's, it's very similar to your, if you have read one book and you think that the answer to all of your questions is in that one book, that is going to be, a, that, then you're just going to go through the, this process. As I said, you're going to become a philosopher really quickly and very opinionated and annoy a lot of people and you're going to burn your fingers very quickly. But if you can learn to read three books, with different perspectives on your problem and understand that this truth to your solution is found in all three of them at the same time and just pick the things that make sense, you are gonna become a senior developer like that. I promise you, because that is the insight that a true senior developer gets. So what I want you to take away from this is that the best tip I can give you as a new developer is to learn that the the process of growing up as a software developer, becoming mature in your role, is always going to be the same thing. You're going to go from a complete beginner to a philosopher where you start questioning things and you're looking for better ways of doing things and then finally you're going to progress to a point where you realize that there are so many suggestions on how to do things and at the end of the day all you can really do is to learn how to look at the problem that you're solving and apply different practices and snippets of information that you have gathered together based on your experience and make a perfect solution for the problem that you are solving. They answer, and this is something that's very hard for a beginner because they believe that there is a universal truth very often to how to solve a given problem and that they are genius solution and magical solutions and the reality is that they're not. There's not, I'm very sorry, it's a very when reality hits you, you will realize that 
there is only a fraction of things that are actually going to make sense to your everyday work life. And the faster you can get to that realization by listening to senior developers, by understanding that you have to be pragmatic and understanding that the truth to your problem or the solution to your problem is not found in one source of information. It's found in many sources at the same time. And just pick the things that make sense for your given situation. Learn how to associate things and apply them to your your context that is the best skill that you can develop and if you master that you have become a senior developer because that is what a senior developer does have a great day